Um, but anyway, it is, um, it's week 14, last, uh, last week of the semester here, and I just want to throw out a little public service announcement. Um, I'm going to be on KBGA's Outer Limits um, this Saturday. So, program schedule, it must be here. Oh, there we go. Um, well, I don't know why it's called Bonanza with yours truly. Let me just, let me see here. No? Oh, that's Sunday. Hang on. May 16th. Four, five, six. Program schedule. Sunday. Monday. Wednesday. I'm not sure why it's not there. Um, anyway. Uh, keep going again. I don't think they started at Sunday. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I'm, I think I'm all the way. Oh, wait, now I'm just, I'm scrolling with the mouse now. There we go. Mmm, there it is. Okay, su sun Saturday, 2 to 4, the outer limits. Ooh, I've been spelling dog magic wrong. Oh, well. We'll have to, we'll have to address that. I can't, I can't read the whole thing, but there are some pretty, uh, pretty heady uh, speakers on here. There, there's, uh, Human over mind, comedy, inundation, nuggets of news, scathing variety of solutions, et cetera, et cetera. 21st century. Little guys like Noam Chomsky on there, Russell Brand, kind of speak, speak their own mind. But uh, anyway, looking forward to being on it because uh, the host is interested in renewable energy for a variety of reasons. And he first heard about the energy technology program here at Missoula College just last week. And he was baffled by the fact that he's been living in Missoula for the majority of his adult life and did not know that such a program existed in his fair city. So anyway, I'm going to get a chance just to promote the program a little bit on the show. I shot that out over Facebook, Twitter, and um, LinkedIn, so it's going to be going to be a blast. Okay, so another thing, and this is, the, the rest of this lecture is going to be a little bit um, free form, but that's okay. I do want to get into um, I want to get into economics just a little bit, and I think I'm just I'm just going to go. I, I gave a similar lecture in um, 2:43 on Tuesday, so I'm just going to borrow from those notes and um, sort of apply them to this situation. This was just a very simple um, energy calculations. Um, okay, so here's here's one um, one issue that that um, comes to mind when thinking about money. There are a lot of different names for money, um, and, and if I may be so bold, I also want to talk a little bit about a paper that I just wrote. I don't think I've shown this. Uh, yet before any lecture, so I want to—I do want to throw it out here. This paper was just published. Uh, let's go to Papers, 2016, International Journal of Design and Nature and Ecodynamics. Kind of an interesting title. Probably never heard of it, but um, that's just how it goes with a lot of these scientific journals. Excuse me. I am going to talk about this a little bit on the radio uh, this Saturday. So um, I talk about entropy acceleration. I talk about information, and I also talk about uh, socioeconomics. But let me dive all the way down uh, to one of the last equations in this paper. I'm going to kind of skip the entropy and the information stuff. But if you get right down here. 
Nope, oh, that's the wrong one. Right down. Google's building a city from the ground up? Yeah. Really? Kind of like, a like a test city for uh, like solar electric? Yeah, that, that might. Try out their cars. That might be, yeah. I, I wonder if they're doing that in conjunction with, uh, with uh, Tesla and Solar City. I think uh, we had that same conversation in PV whether you could just keep building solar panels from solar energy. The answer is yes. Uh, they, the, the embodied energy comes back in about uh, um, half a year. Um, so that's from an energy standpoint. But here's, here's what I want to um, go with on this guy. I've got an equation right here saying that um, money, which is, I just, I just, and I write it as dot M, is in some way proportional to information. So I'm just going to write that larger on this um, the screen, and I, I, I hope in my next paper I'm able to develop it. I'll just write it right out here. Um, I'll write it a little bit differently because M sometimes means mass, so I'll just write it as a dollar sign. Um, change in dollar sign with respect to time equals some uh, coefficient beta times the change in information with respect to time. So this is something just to, to keep in mind. This is not going to be on any of the exams in this course, but this is kind of for future thought. So first of all, what do all these symbols mean? Well, um, we've been through 101, we've been through 102. We know that we can plot typically plot time as the independent variable, and we typically plot these other things as the dependent variable. So um, I'm going to try to do two different colors. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put money on this axis. Let me come up and put that in green. Uh, green. So I'm going to put money on this axis, the green axis. And I'll put, um, maybe I'll put um, information on this axis. So I'm using I for information, and I'm using dollar sign for, for money. Now, what we would all like to have happen in general uh, with our money is, is something like this. This is sort of your your ideal, right? As a, as a function of time, we're just having this conversation, um, you want to get richer. Well, not every, but well, since money itself does not, in fact, exist, only assets, real estate, cars, gold bars, etc., exist, money is sort of an, an agreed to thing. So on, on the one hand, um, everybody can become wealthier on a financial basis, but not really on an absolute basis. Because whatever, whenever somebody gets more money, by definition, everybody else has less. Just because it's a relative measure. Okay. The other thing I want to look at is information. And so, in general, I think we, we would all, and I'm I'm just plotting them both on the same axis. In general, we would all like to have access to more and more information, too, right? That's why you read books, go to school, um, listen to the news, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what I try to do with this equation is um, look at this variable B. And so it's, it's kind of difficult because we now have three variables. We've got time information, and we have money. But we could also plot, um, we could do a, a stochastic plot or a, or a scatter plot of sort of where um, we are, where each individual person on the planet or each individual company on the planet happens to be in regard to those two um, variables. So now, Oh, I, I like this um, 
I like this a lot because if we go back to the, um, the outer limits, check this out. Here's a good visual. We're flying, we're flying down through uh, time, right? These, these um, palm trees are, are coming past us. So let's just, let's just have the uh, horizontal axis be, um, be information. We'll have the vertical axis be money. And now we're flying through time. So let's go back to this guy. So here's, here's, um, here's information. I'm just going to use a black pen for this one. And here's money. And time is, is sort of zooming away from us into the, um, into the distance or, or coming at us, however you want to think about time. Now, um, we were just talking about the one percenters, and we were also talking about how some of these large corporations might deny the harmful effects of chloral fluorocarbons, might deny the harmful effects of excessive greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. These tend to be the people that have the most money and are the, the best informed. So we can sort of think of, you can sort of think of yourself as being wealthy on a financial basis as well as an information basis. Um, you can think of somebody, gosh, who's uh, born in, in poverty and probably has very little chance of getting access to either money or information is sort of existing down here. You know, um, you can think of somebody like, um, gosh, some you know somebody's born into nobility, born into a lot of money. Well, you're you're just born, so you don't really know anything. So here's a, your noble, noble folks didn't necessarily earn their money, um, and and might actually be protected from lack of information just because they have money. You know, you can sort of afford to be ignorant, if you will, um, and then. You know, some, somewhere down in here, I think, and strangely enough, sort of bizarrely enough, you actually have a lot of uh, educators who, you know, just think about all your, you know, your high school teachers, lots of information, really smart, but typically don't get uh, paid a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> you know, they're doing it because they love it. And I've got a lot of great examples of, of uh, instructors of the year. So we, we all sort of, you know, fall somewhere on this... Um, Continuum or, or perspective, so I can you know, write this up as the, you know, the so-called one percenters. Now back to this little shot, and where I was going with my paper was to say that you can actually use misinformation to your advantage. So let's say you're you're sitting up here as a one percenter, always trying to have access to the latest information, you know, what the stocks are doing, what the weather is doing, et cetera, et cetera. As long as you're there, you're, you're attempting to stay there, and you can actually use that position to misinform everybody else and sort of keep them away from the correct information or access to larger sums of money. Anyway, that's one thing I talk about uh, in that paper. I think, though, with the advent of the Internet, social media, most people who are down here are really able to uh, climb and push back in a way they never they, they couldn't before. So that's that's a, a good thing in my mind. Okay, the other thing to keep in mind in, in terms of money is that uh, the word incentives has a specific financial meaning. Uh, one incentive is to give a rebate, meaning you know, give me the money now, you know, to buy something, and I'll give you back some later. It's time value of money type thing. Grant means I've got a pot of money sitting somewhere. I'm just going to give it to you. Go do something good with it. A loan. I'm going to. And this this guy. This, so this so a rebate kind of goes this direction. I was trying to think of how we might put engineering terms on this. So it goes this direction now, and it kind of comes back this direction later. A grant. Um, a, a grant can either you know go out and do good things and create a lot of extra income. You can also be kind of throwing it away, so it's a little bit of a, an or statement. A loan is supposed to go out uh, kind of small and then come back at a later time much bigger. That's the idea about the loan. That's how that sort of, uh, that um, in, this, in this case, the loan, the idea is that the uh, change in money over the change in time 
is going to be greater than zero, at least for the person making the loan. Tax incentive, uh, gosh, what's, what's that mean? Well, it means you, used, you were going to pay this, this much taxes, and now you just sort of uh, pay only this, presumably because this portion of the taxes you were going to pay but didn't goes off to sort of the, the greater good, if you will. Um, Production-based, this was something we were, we were doing in regard to solar, but you could also look at, you could look at production-based in terms of sustainable forestry. You know, um, we've talked a lot about uh, ethanol subsidies in this course, and in, a, in an ideal world, you're, you know, you're making, you've got an incentive to produce more corn and make more ethanol. You could also look this, at this as a uh, sustainable uh, forestry. You know, if you're sustaining the forest, making sure it doesn't burn down, you keep planting the seeds, the sun keeps uh, shining, water keeps flowing, that's how your money can come back on a sustainable forestry project. Um, renewable energy certificates, this is actually something that I'm going to discuss with the, uh, the governor's office on um, Monday. Renewable energy certificates and carbon credits. And it's something that I don't think exists, but what we're, what we're trying to convince um, we're trying to convince the state of Montana, and, there, and there's some great um, great news out there. Uh, Governor Bullock said he is going to set aside five million acres in Montana for restoration. He said that in uh, Evergreen Magazine pretty recently. So, what we would like to do is um, take Steve Running's data. Steve gave a lecture here in, in the course earlier. Take Steve Running's data and put a predictive model in place as to where the forest fires are most likely to happen. Look at the histor historical values, the historical fire record, and say this is what the, what the predicted fire seasons are going to look like. But if we go in and do some sustainable harvesting, you can say, gosh, look, we kept all that carbon out of the sky, we should get some credit for it at whatever the going rate is, uh, 15 bucks a ton, 30 bucks a ton. That money um, that was going to go into firefighting then comes back into the forest and we get some um, sustainable forestry out of it. Maybe we get some tax incentives. We're already working on loans. I've, I've submitted grants on this. I don't think the rebate really uh, comes into play. But all of these different financial and economic mechanisms come into play when you start dealing with, with the larger systems that we're trying to right now. Yeah, okay. And I think I'm going to skip the future value of money. It's, that's mainly for, uh, for 214. Okay, well, I think I've partially succeeded in my goals and uh, looking at <laughs> how money flows through different systems, uh, sort of in, in the engineering uh, basis, and I've also shown you the, um, you know, my own interpretation between uh, money, information, and time. And if you guys want to take a further look at it, it's the, um, it's online. I'll just show you how to find it. Uh, Layton International Journal of Design. So again, it's the International Journal of Design and Nature and Ecodynamics. It's, it's, it's not exactly uh, light reading, but it's, um, it's a lot of fun to write. So there, I, I think our paper is in uh, issue one of this year. And it was the uh, anchor paper for the um, journal. I had a couple students, Serenity Noel helped with it, and so did uh, Gary Orum. So there it is, free, open access. So take a look. That's my own view on the role of, of money in society. Okay, uh, let's take a little break, and then we'll get back to some grading.